Hello everyone and welcome to SquidCon 2024's class on kit bashing. Um, for those who you don't know me, I'm your host Mitchy, a happy lurker in the Squid Mark community and uh, yeah, I guess the sad person who got roped into doing this class. Uh, lucky for you, I'm good at one thing, skit bashing. I used to be like an IKEA expert on building things, but I gave that away because it just didn't work for me anymore. So let's go into what does work for me. Kit bashing. Um, I'm not going to read a dictionary for you. I'm pretty confident you can all do that to a certain extent. But basically, the idea behind kit bashing is taking something you like and making it better. I've taken the uh, great examples here from our community. Uh, the first one we probably know it's, uh, you know, the idea of taking somebody's head, put it in something else, then you give it like a nice flowing sculpted cape and all that crap. Looks quite good. But I don't necessarily want to talk about the whole sculpting and green stuff part because I personally hate that myself. But, you know, teach their own. Now, the middle one is more my style, where you just take a model, add a few bits and pieces on and make it like into something truly unique. And then you kind of have like the beautiful art on the right hand side um, from Lord Benji. I kind of give up at that point because he just took everything he could find, including his kitchen sink and made it work somehow. So, you know, I figured like I'll do my best to put on some googly eyes and at least I helped him. But overall, pretty impressive examples. But what you'll note is that of most of these parts, almost 80 to about 50 percent in that range is still original model you change a few things you do a few things and that's the idea behind kit bashing sure you can 3d print a model but the idea is that you use an existing kit and combine it with something else now i've said a few things like kits and bits and the most important part is these bits that we're using to build something um, before you start you've got to have them and the easiest thing to find is you know online if you don't like going to stores or talking to people, you can go to eBay, for example, or Facebook and just ask people where to get bits. Maybe they want to trade, maybe they have leftovers. Or if you're like insanely rich, you can just buy actual kits, cut them up and then repurpose them for what you want. Personally, I kind of use all three. As I said earlier, you have your eBay where you can buy big lots of them and then just find whatever you need or individual pieces. Uh, it can be a bit more pricey, but it is a good way to find a rare item that you want. Hobby stores are quite fun for myself because you can go in there, talk to people, exchange IDs, and well, yeah, most importantly, they tend to have a big box of things that you can exchange. Additionally, there's the third option. Uh, it might be popular with some people I personally don't know, but I know these two people, they like to exchange bits together. Um, some people have big, you know, boxes of things and like entire sprues lined up back in the closet where they keep it. Other people have apparently a lot of money, I didn't know. They can buy 3D printers and, you know, print things for you. So what you do is you find these people on Discord, maybe specifically in our community, and then you just bag them for parts. And, you know, at some point they'll give in and they'll help you out. So just saying that again, you know, take your moment to actually read those names. They are great help for me at least. Probably not anymore after this stream, but hey, you know, just saying, giving a fair shout out to people that actually do help me along in the hobby. Now, when you have bits, everybody has bits, but you also need tools. Yesterday, we had the Hobby Making 101, where you basically got introduced to the simple things, but that only works when you want to connect things that want to stick together. If you grab a pin vise and a bit of horrible sprue glue, then it gets easier to make things match that don't want to get matched, but sometimes you have to be a bit, yeah, I guess, brutish. You get a saw or you get one of those horrible hooky tools and you force things into compliance. Now, the important part with tools is there's one master tool, and that one is always around. You need to have a ruler. I don't know why I didn't actually watch this particular video, but apparently you have to rule everything with a ruler. So I checked it out, and this is, you know, official. I have his unapproval to show this, so we're all good for that. As for tips and tricks, um, yeah, measure twice, cut once, then blame Lucas, because he did something with that ruler that I will never forget. But overall, the idea is that basically anything you cut down becomes two bits. You start with one, you cut them in two, now you have two pieces you can reuse. You also need to hoard those because if you throw them away, then at some point you're going to need them in your environment and then they will be gone. That's not particularly nice, but it does happen. Luckily for those, we have one of those beautiful bit boxes you see down there where you can just pile and pile things on. But, you know, that's not the only way. There's also people who like tubes and wires for some reason. They can actually bend things and reuse parts and just make unique constructions with those. Um, I will possibly show you some of those things in a bit. 
But overall, the idea is that you don't necessarily need to limit yourself to one thing. There are a lot of other options you can do. So if you're looking at Lego pieces, you're looking at Plasticard profiles, which are the beams on the right, or if you're looking at other things, anything can go in the kit bash. But the most important part is basically that you want to make certain that you're using the same size parts when you're building an actual model. Because the moment that doesn't really pan out, and I'll show you in a bit later, it's going to be really hard to actually go over them. Because we all know the size of orcs, and if you start putting those on regular human bodies, you get very interesting models, but I don't know if it's what you want. Well, then finally, we have the approach, I would say. Creativity or a plan. Um, I am personally more of a creative chaos person. Quite a lot of other people are like that as well. I'm just, you know, not going to say any names, but they are out there. But you also have the lovely detailed plan people. Um, the approach to creative chaos is quite easy. You just dump everything on your desk and really you just hope for the best. Uh, sometimes you glue things wrong. You just cut it off, try again. It's kind of different from the detailed plan bit. Uh, this is the part where you actually go online, you look at parts, you maybe use Photoshop or other programs to write down your ideas, try them out, and then you kind of plan for perfection. But as you can see uh, on the left hand side, there's a lot of stuff about all that. It's entirely up to you what you do with it. But most important for me is that you basically got to have fun when you're doing it. And as you probably already picked up from this uh, stream so far, I like to have some fun when I'm kit bashing around because otherwise for me, there's no point in the hobby. So let's see if I can actually switch over to the desk. Kind of go over these similar things. Just bear with me for a second. Swap the screen around. There we go. So I talked a bit about those tubes and profiles earlier, and I'll just show you a couple of examples of what you can do with them. Because, for example, you have these lovely tubes, and they are quite small, but that makes them quite good. Because if you want to use them on a model, for example, like this, you can actually reuse, and I'm hoping that it's caught up, it's probably better like this. You can basically reuse them to make uh, halberd shafts or weapons like that. And the idea is you can just cut off the pieces here, here, and usually a hand, and then just connect it all together in whatever weapon you want. I can show this a bit better on the camera. That, all right, yeah. As you can see, these are actually four pieces. We have the weapon head, and then the tubing, the hand, and the back end. And that whole assembly kind of creates a unique model. Now, feel free to throw in the chat if you can tell me how many different kits and pieces I've actually used on this model. Let me see if I can zoom that in for you one second. Go. Always fun this. But this model here is something that we made together with the mod crew during our meetup. And then I asked somebody, as in I pestered somebody, to paint it for me. I'm not going to say who it is, but you know, he might be doing a stream later tonight, probably in about 45 minutes, give or take. But you know, we'd never know. Now, the idea behind it is that basically, in my case, I looked at two or three pieces. I said, hey, there's a specific unit that I like with the whole backpack assembly. And then there's the weapon on the shoulder bit, and specifically the whole idea of having a halberd. And then I just cut these pieces up separately. And I'll show you with an unpainted model to give you an idea. For example, here we have a very basic Space Marine. He has a arm with a 3D printed shoulder pad that I put on. Then combine that with a backpack and a little antenna. I don't even know where it's from. And then we have a beautiful little skull. All these pieces basically get mashed together and it's still just a top of the line model, but imagine that you have 10 give or take units of these in a squad and they look the same. I mean, for me personally, I don't find any joy in the hobby doing that. You know, like what, you gotta paint 10 things. It's even worse, you gotta build 10 things, then you have to paint 10 things, then you're playing with these same 10 things on the source me, I will just spend some time making them unique. Now, this is a basic line model, so I will make like one sergeant or similar com officer figure for this and call it a day. But as you saw earlier, when it comes to the actual more important hero models, let's see if I can show that a bit better. There we go. When it comes to those hero models, I will try to do something unique. For example, this one is having a gun on a second piece that I used from, I believe it was Tech Marine Kit. I want to zoom in. Give me one second, folks. Always the fun of digital stuff. One second. I will do 
close to him. Oh no, that's breaking. Oh well. Just checking if this is better. So basically, um, you want to use the different parts of the kits that you have. As I said earlier, Tech Marine arm, gun, and then I assemble them on a backpack that I picked up somewhere in the store. Essentially, that gets combined with another piece of tubing, and all that way you go around till you make a unique model. In this case, uh, I think he's a very sorry about that, everyone. Looks like the stream had a bit of a hiccup with the internet. Let me try again. So essentially, what we have here is a model that consists of different parts. We've pushed this together. Got the tubing that I used to make that spear again, combined with a power saw that I picked up. And because I'm not that good at the actually modeling and remodeling the arms, I put a little bit of chain around it so it doesn't look that terrible. Um, you combine that with, I think these are tendrils from a chaos unit I picked up somewhere. And you combine that with a backpack, a couple of like exhausts. Always lovely. Looks like we're uh, jumping in and out as annoying as that is. Uh, sorry for all this folks, by the way. Anyway, um, we got a backpack from a chaos marine, I think they're called. Combine that with some essentials tubings things like that and this just gives you the whole idea but once again i've taken six or seven pieces of the model and i'm kind of rolling with that and just slapping it together in whatever way fits now the reason this is kind of working really well is because as you can see when we're looking at these marines they're all in the same size as i mentioned earlier you do want to have the same size bits because when they get mismatched it becomes really hard to make them work very very simple example of that these are known as upgrade sprues sold for a hefty price and as you can see we have a gun here with an arm that's beautiful now if you combine that with the let's see what is it with the weapons and the arms here I hope you can see it quite well as you can see we're talking about severe skill difficulties which means it's really hard to use that hand to actually make things work together now when you get to kit bashing, you can actually do some pretty amazing things. For example, taking this piece here is a combination of a few separate guns. This because mainly each sprue you buy will give you lots of different options. But a combination of separate guns that I took from those sprues, a antenna somewhere with the little, yeah, I guess, marine sitting in some kind of buggy seat. And on this hand, I think it is a minigun from probably a uh, Chaos Marine that I picked up somewhere. I used, once again, this tubing that I talked about before, and I've actually got laying around here in a big bunch. Essentially, cut off some tubings to the right size, stick them through the model, wrap some wires around it to give it a little bit of a profile, and then use that. But the thing behind that is, because a lot of brands use the same sizes for all their things, that means in the case of Warhammer, that I can basically take the piece of one piece, line it on top of a second unit, then cut off the legs of this poor guy who has been technically having a really bad day and then basically match it together so that when you combine the individual pieces you can actually make a dune buggy instead of the horrible original id that they decide to sell you which basically looked like a quad on steroids with no protection whatsoever now i don't know if this person driving here has a good view but overall for me it looks a bit better than just building the standard things and I know I talked about conversions and kit bashing. So if we want to call this a genuine good kit bash, because I've used about four or five different kits to make something, what people usually call conversion is the alternative. Now, what I've done with this model is basically reused all its original parts to build the frame, as you can see it. And then what I did is I put a hatch on top because originally this gunner is supposed to sit in here, but I thought it was a bit silly to have him sticking out like that. So I essentially cut it off, put the hatch on there, then said, okay, you know, I now am missing the whole turret assembly on top. So what I did is, let me just angle it for you, is I decided to put them here on the side, had to cut off a few pieces, and then turned it into a unique model. Now this still plays legally, 
I see that the stream is cutting out again, lovely. This still plays legally. And essentially the idea behind this is that I now have a unique model I can reuse. But you know, at least it's something fun. I had some time doing it and it doesn't look complete crap in my personal opinion. Now, when you compare that to truly kit bashing on a crazy skill, this is my current work in progress. You can actually say, okay, you know, we have Gene Stealer Cults. We have this lovely commander here that I can take out. Pretty certain you can see the orange here, but let me just center that for you. What I've done is I've taken the legs of, I think it was an average looking human of the Admech faction, put a Gene Stealer head on top with the body parts. And basically doing a simple small kit bash means I now have a commander for inside my vehicle. Now, as you can see, there's basically everything ever going on here. Um, I've taken the bottom of some sort of silo, on scan put a gunner seat in with a secondary gun I picked up somewhere. And then I decided to add on a cannon on the back because I figured out, well, the, I believe, lore of these guys is that they're basically rebels of some sort infiltrating a world. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to throw things on here until it makes sense to me. Now, as you can see, I'm just going to hold it so it doesn't fall off. You see these little orange blobs, in this case of orange tech, I guess, instead of blue tech. And it's what I use a lot personally to basically kit bash and combine things together. Um, the problem with creative kit bashing is that once you glue something, it's kind of stuck and you need to recode it. So when I'm modeling and trying things out, I will just use this orange stuff to basically goop it together in a way that it doesn't get stuck permanently. Because what I found out over many, many times of kit bashing is that I'm never satisfied with it until it's done, which means I will tear things off and retry them. Now, I can still take this out. This is essentially nothing but a empty tube that I found from one of the train bits. Then you slap on a gunner seat, you find the gun somewhere, and I, I honestly don't know this some sort of plate I picked up. But the idea behind it is that when you start combining these things, you can just build fun, unique models. It's the same with the gun here. I had the original gunner, which I believe is one of the AdMac artillery pieces, but it just looked silly with its cannon end. So what I did here is I found a other cannon piece that I got. I cut that off and sawed it off and basically glued that back on quickly show you another thing to do and when it comes to pieces like antennas or technical bits what you can do is you can take a little bit of the plastic card and then as i showed you earlier wrap the wire around it so that it creates a unique profile because essentially these pieces are pretty flat without any definition or profile so when you use them they don't really look that well in your model and what you can do is you can either create something yourself or you can use some sort of tool that's where things get interesting. Essentially, this is a plastic scriber. It's a very sharp piece, and let me just show you the hook. And it's got a hooked end that you can use to basically make scratches into pieces of plastic. So I'm really hoping I'm not going to screw this up too badly, but when you have a piece of plastic like this and you're not happy with the profile, you can see that they put like little like dents and everything in it to give you more, or I said, I technically say less flatness. The idea behind this plastic scrivener is that you can basically take that and carefully drag little dents and grooves in it. Now, this is never going to look as nice if I'm not measuring it or making it work. But the idea behind this piece of equipment is that you can use basically the flat end to make a groove in it and cut it out. And I actually just realized I picked up the wrong one. Lovely. This is actually my um, fiber. This is what I use to cut paint in half because this thing is way too sharp and actually cuts panels in half. But that actually has its own use as well. The idea behind this bit is that basically you can keep dragging those grooves out. Sometimes I have a metal uh, plate or similar. But what I tend to do is I just keep tracing that groove until I get wear and tear on the pieces in a more, yeah, what's the word, mechanical way than just using a raw paint. Now, here to show you it's a bit hard but the idea behind it is that when you have these indents on top when you use plastic card you can't really replicate that feeling you could technically use green stuff and sculpt it but i personally don't like doing that because i'm horrible at it so i tend to use the scriber and a metal ruler or something similar to basically cut pieces now there's a lot of things i have 
as I talked about before, uh, this is actually, I think it's called a Tamiya Plastic Scriber 2. Um, the idea is that you should be able to make indents with it and scribe, but this thing is so sharp that I use it to make uh, very flush cuts in plastic. Uh, don't know if it's supposed to be used like that, but that's what I use it for. This one is, I think, a Green Stuff World Plastic Scriber that is completely modeled differently. If you look at the top ends, you can see that one is way more angled. And I actually use this one to make uh, and create like essentially just like my hand here, grooves in the plastic because this is a little bit less sharp than the other one. Now, if I take back my original example here, this one actually has a skull on the side that I had to drill in. So pretty confident that some of you know these things, but what we have is a pin vise. So like this set of drills and perhaps you're lazy, then you get something like this, which is a electrical pin vise, which also has its own set of drills. You get the idea. Basically what you do is you can drill a hole, just exactly the right size that you want into the model and then attach something. I mentioned that before that we had these really thin copper tubes. ID is the same. If you have a hand that you wanna put the tube into, you could look around for the exact right bit, or you can just find the right size of drill and just carefully drill a hole in the hand that will hold the spear that you're designing. Now, if you carefully drill, you're all good. If you screw up, what you do is you get this beautiful hobby chain or you get some of the wire, I'll show you in a second, and you just wrap it around and pretend you never screwed up. As long as people think it's a unique model, then they're happy about it. And for me, that was the original rule I showed you as well. If I'm happy about it, then everybody else can you know, just bugger off for all I care. Now, I've used this process with the other tube as well to create a little bit more of a uh, standoff style character here. This hand never really hold uh, anything besides just you know being like that. So I just drill down into it, put the copper tube in, uh, cut off one piece of plastic, another piece of plastic, and just kind of combine it together into what I like. I do this quite a lot. But the other reason I do this is because you can also do this to pin original pieces together. For example, the arm here might be a bad joint because it's never designed like that. So what you can do once again is just pin those pieces together by essentially putting a rod on the internal structure. So you can cut a piece of tubing in the way that you want it, then uh, basically drill on the right hand side here in the shoulder pad, put it in. And just as I'm showing you on the overlay, you basically put it through your model, use some super glue, and it just sticks really well. You can usually move it a bit to model it right, but the idea behind it is that it doesn't always fit perfectly, and then you have to improvise. Now, as you already figured out, we have a lot of lovely pieces. This thing here has also a purpose. When I'm basically playing around with gluing things, I will have a set of little clamps here that I can use to connect something. So if I take this as an example, when I was gluing it together, I didn't really have a good way of holding it. So what I did is I just clamped it like this and just let it rest on the table so that it's a bit comfortable. Right. So that's a bit comfortable and then just wait, you know, whatever time you need for your glue to set in and to stay together. This is something that you'll figure out is very handy in kit bashing because we're technically working with parts that don't want to stick together which can make either painting or building them quite hard. And I think these are from um, Games Workshop, but there's very many other brands out there. What you can also do is if you're building something simple, I personally did not like the walker structure that this unit had. So I cut off an arm, put some sort of laser or range finder on it. But on the other hand, I decided to put a magnet in and it's not looking as nice it is because I still need to actually send this down and make it look a little bit better. But you can essentially put some magnets in, then you can swap around pieces, which means in this case, if I still had the original arm, uh, to be honest, I think I might have it somewhere in the box. But if I still had the original arm, you could basically reuse that, put that back in. And then depending whether or not you're building something unique or if you want to play a legal battle, you can swap the parts out and have something that looks good. In this case, uh, what I did is essentially I took uh, the spare gun from the sprue. I put, I think, a shoulder blade and a couple of other pieces together to get the ID of this uh, Sentinel style walker for the Space Marines. On this side, I think it actually might be, I think about it, 
if I'm not remembering wrong, uh, these things are where these things were supposed to be. So what I did is I put the rocket launchers on this one in the spot that the lasers needed to go into and then freaked out because I realized I had no purpose for them. So I put the lasers on something else and claimed it was a good idea. Once again, as long as I can claim I'm happy about it, I'm good with it. Now, I talked about the tubes a bit earlier. These are just very standard plastic card tubes. So you just tie them together. But there's also something called profiles in plastic card. And I saw them in the sheet we had earlier on the presentation. I'm just going to fill out to show you. The idea behind the profiles is essentially, it's going to be a bit difficult to show. One second. The profiles are essentially little pieces that are mimicking the shapes of modern pieces of steel or metal. So I believe this is a H profile or an I profile. And the idea about this is you can actually reuse this to kit bash something, because if we're looking at this thing, if I wanted to add a profile to this in a certain type of shape, I'd actually need to add this with either a second set, which would probably cost me like 60 or 70 euros in the worst case, or I can just build it from scratch with some profiles or leftover pieces. Now they come luckily in quite a few varied shapes, a little bit tiny, but you have a L shape. Essentially the idea behind it is these are once again mimicking real construction beams. So they have L shapes, H shapes, uh, little squares, all kinds of beautiful things, but they are really nice to basically use to build out your own construction. I don't think I have one for the basing here, what I quite often do is I can use these on my base as well. Just use the leftover bits and then it's like rubble and things like that. And I'm just quickly checking if I missed anything. I did. We had in the tools, sprula glue and regular glue. Now, I'm pretty confident everybody knows what regular plastic glue is. You know, you use it and basically glue things together. But the other side is sprue glue. This stuff is a little bit special. Um, I know it says on the label, to me, extra thin cement. That's what you start out with. And then basically what you do is you discard all the pieces that you have and then just make this like, I guess goo is the best way to explain it. This somewhat thicker um, goo that you can use to join pieces together when the glue itself is not, um, basically this is thicker than the real glue. So if the glue itself is not holding, you can sometimes use this to fill up gaps and glue the little bit of misaligned pieces. And the other set that I use a lot is not actually glue, but it is wires. Now, let me use this one first. As you saw on the antenna earlier, what I did is just get cheap wire, and you can find this in any hardware store, and then basically find some menial labor. takes forever but what I do is I wrap it around any structure I have and then just keep going until it kind of wants to catch which takes a little bit of a while but the idea behind it is that when you start wrapping these really neatly together and you keep going you get this texture on whatever piece of equipment you're making and that texture you can then replicate by using it to make antennas or if you don't like antennas you want to go for something easier you could replicate it on the back here. Um, I'm hoping it's in focus. There we go. You could replicate it on the back here to give a little bit more profile to the details that you're building because there's a lot of cool stuff. Sadly, all that cool stuff is usually expensive. And this is basically just some sort of cheap metal wire I found with a piece of plastic. You can just wrap it together. That's what I use the thin wires for. There's also thicker wires. For example, we have there we go. We have tin wire here. Some use aluminum. I prefer tin because it's a little bit weak and easier to work with. So if I want to build tubings or things like that on my models, because we saw here on the model I had earlier, we have like the tentacles and macadendrites, whatever they're called. But we also have a lot of tubes on the back. Now, I was lucky that I had this piece laying around, but if I want to build four or five more models with tubing like this, uh, it's probably going to be hard to find. So you can improvise by using this stuff because it's quite easy to work with. You can just drill it in, glue it, and then kind of sculpt it in whatever way you want to do. Uh, primes really well, at least the stuff I have. And overall, the idea behind it is that when you want to do any power cables and things like that, you can just use these. Now, as I mentioned before, 
power cables have all kinds of, I hope you can see this, all kinds of structure. Wait, let me take, zoom in a bit. Hold on. There we go. Power cables have all kinds of structure in it. And you can't really replicate, replicate that well when you have a tin wire like this. So that's where the trick comes in for essentially wrapping it around with the thinner wire I had earlier. Because the difference between that and the wire is that you can actually make any pattern you want. Now, this looks like jank, like hell, I guess, because I haven't really done it well. When you do do it well, it comes out quite better. And the ones I mainly use for that are power cables. And it's quite a thick cable here. But these ones I basically use wrap around and then I can create any type of structure and shape I want. If you want, you can use aluminum wire. Uh, I just like tin because it's a bit softer to work with. You can use uh, paper clips. I've seen people use before for exactly the same purpose. But the idea behind it is that you don't necessarily need to buy that specific bit if you want to build things together. Now, I just need to reach over here and zoom out a bit. What that means is, for example, you might have your lovely bit box that we talked about earlier. You can fill it up with a shuddered ton of things. The idea behind it is though, if you find something you like, you can just save it. I don't know what I'm going to use any for this for. I've got a couple of them here laying around. But I might like the cylinder piece on there we go. Might like the cylinder piece on it. Maybe I want to take that out and just use the gun holder. But the thing is, these are all things I've collected over the years by trading with people and collecting them. The idea behind that is that when I go to a friendly meetup or anywhere else, and I know that somebody else like me is there who wants to get bash, I say, hey guys, do you happen to have you know specific faction pieces or do you happen to have a certain set of guns? These are all lovely weapons from our um, space marines. I say, hey, you know, you have space marine guns, give them to me, I want to do something with them reason I put them in this travel case for me is basically when I go there, I'll say, hey, I want to swap. I talk to them. I say, hey, you know, I love what you're doing with your army. How did you do this? Oh, you use cable. Okay. Yeah, I use cable too. Those are bits. Okay. Do you have leftovers? Because as I showed you earlier, when we have a sprue and we build it, even if we use each and every individual piece on the sprue, there's always leftover bits. Those bits I always hoard and collect from my end because if I can put them in the box, I can take them with me, I can use them to build whenever, and all kinds of things you can do with that by just asking people. Now, when you get access to a 3D printer, uh, you can print out skulls with a lot more detail than you can in something else. Um, the shoulder pads, it's the same. You can print them out, find some files online, and just you know pester people until they give you things. But for me personally, I always prefer working with the plastic over the resin materials, because the resin materials need to be super glued and the plastic materials can use plastic glue. Now for me, plastic glue is nice because I tend to screw up a lot, so I can actually use a few seconds to fix that while it's all setting. Uh, super glue tends to be very quick and I usually get it everywhere and end up being stuck to the model or being stuck to something else. That's not really as nice as it could be, but that's personal preference. Uh, both is completely viable, it's whatever you want. Now, I'm going to ask if anyone has questions, because I know I just said a lot. If there's something you wish to see, uh, let me know. I honestly don't know if I went too quick for some of the pieces, but I'll give you guys a couple of seconds to reply. What's my favorite combo? Um, for me, personally, I have basically a theme that I'm doing with an army. So before the army of the Space Marines, I was working on the, um, I believe they're called Dwarves the Voton. I didn't, oh dear, two questions at once, lovely. I don't really uh, had the time to kitbash with the Voton, but currently, as you saw, I'm working on the Marines. I can do whatever I want with that. And I personally love it because there's a lot and a lot of different factions. 
the more factions in the same size there are, the more bits I can get from people, um, the more things I can basically buy in a store or trade away. But as you also saw, that doesn't necessarily mean I can stick to one thing. I built this piece because my next set will be Gene Stealer Colts. And that basically means that I can just use whatever. And sometimes when I don't feel like doing anything with my current army or theme, I will just pick up whatever I have. Now, as for the question about whether I accept bid donations, uh, yes, I do. But it's not just me that accepts them. I'm pretty confident that people in your local club or local store are willing to accept these donations because they might also enjoy kit bashing or helping out just like other people do. Any more questions for tonight? Because otherwise I'm afraid I may have to stop five minutes early. Right then. Uh, in that case, I am sorry for not making it a full 45 minutes. Uh, sadly, sometimes, you know, you plan things out and you end up, I guess, either rushing it or going through your material a little bit faster than you thought you would. In this case, uh, thank you all for your time. And for me, as I said before, most important rule of kit bashing.